October 3rd, 2013. Work session, all members present. Okay, we'll begin. Um, I got a call from a civic leader in Lake Ronkonkoma who's concerned about AD, which is a uh, memorandum of understanding with two other towns. And uh, Russell Barnett happened to come by on another matter. I called the civic leader and had him explain what his concerns were and Russell was in some kind of agreement that maybe Russell ought to review this memorandum of agreement before we go into it. Have any of you looked at it or read it? So uh, I, I think a two-work uh, hiatus is not going to do any harm to anybody. So um, if you don't, if you don't mind, I'll move to table that. Fine. Fine. Okay. Okay. Um, Frank is here. Next week, uh, or two weeks from now, uh, the Hot Park Industrial Overlay District is going on for resolution, as I understand. For public hearing. For, for public, public hearing, hearing, rather. Well, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you want to discuss that today or next uh, at the day of the uh, of the hearing of the work session? Which would be I'm November. I'll discuss it right now. You so want to be prepared to? Okay. I, supervisor, I just advertise a public hearing. Is it on there now? No, it's, it's not, not on. No, it was, no, it's it was not held. No, so it's yeah. not I, on. I, would, I, I could held it because it came to me because okay. none of us knew anything really what <laughs> right. the final results were from mm -hmm. DEW and well, planning. The question is do we want to know now or the work session of the day be prior to the hearing? Well, why not now? I would okay. say now. It's okay. okay. I think you can bring Russ up too for sure. some issues. Mm -hmm. And okay. I'm going to have Fred come down because Fred to work on the ordinance as well. Okay. <clears throat> Just to briefly wrap up where we're at, um, what we're doing with the ordinance, the zoning <coughs> ordinance, is creating what we call overlay districts. Now that's separate. That concept is separate from the hot bog industrial uh, overlay district. And what I mean by being separate is we are intend to have in the future or recommend to the town board several other overlay districts and these overlay districts will be regulations that apply to specific <coughs> areas because those areas have inherent characteristics which are different from let's say other similarly zoned areas and, and for example another one might be that we might propose in the future is uh, an overlay district for the area surrounding the smith haven mall uh, another one might be downtown areas. We haven't selected those out yet, but we're going to uh, uh, do uh, that. And that, by the way, is the first part of this ordinance that you are considering. We actually are considering two separate things. One is to create the overlay uh, district uh, uh, or the ability to create overlay districts, and that's the first half of this particular ordinance. And the second part is to create the first overlay district which is to apply for the hop hog industrial park now the basically the descriptions of the overlay districts are right here in the ordinance unless there's board has uh wants more detail about the creation of districts I, i'll sk skip that and go directly to the hop hog industrial district which is going to be a separate item now well, why are we mixing both no, because one, you're creating the ordinance to enable it. Uh, to, and then, to enable overlay districts. Right, and then the second part is going to be to create the overlay district itself. Specific to yes. one area. Yes. Which is HIA. That's correct. Okay. What of them is you're mending the zoning, zoning that too, right? Well, that's what the second part is. The second part is, hi, Fred. The second part is the actual creation of the overlay district. Oh. And for all intensive purposes, we approach that just like we would do a zone change. If you were to rezone an area to residential or to business or whatever, it's handled in that same <clears throat> fashion because it is a district that we are creating. So that's the overlay aspect of it. And this is important. And one of the reasons why we could not do this sooner is because of this is an over, uh, a zoning district the town has to notify all residents within 200 feet of this particular area, and that's a substantial number when you take a look at the boundaries of a 1,200-acre park that you have. And I was speaking with the town clerk, and we will have this done by the time of the public hearing, which we believe, if the town board sets it for November or December, we should be able to have that done. Now, the key features of 
the zoning districts. And I included, by the way, a map that's at the end of uh, your particular uh, 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 packet with the zoning ordinance. When we last discussed this uh, about, uh, I think it was about 10 weeks ago, the, what we left was with basically as Councilman McCarthy had suggested, we should do amendments that up to, that would not trigger an environmental impact statement. And this, was re, uh, this ordinance was then referred to the Department of Environment and Waterways, and that's why Russ is here, whom, uh, and Russ's office made a rather lengthy and detailed set of recommendations, all of which have been incorporated into the version of the ordinance that you have before you. The issues, and I'll let Russ speak to that if necessary about why he came to those conclusions, but basically had to do with essentially issues of density and traffic. What we concluded with regard to uh, building uh, densities were first off that we agreed that the entire park, excluding uh, uh, those areas which are a thousand feet adjacent to a residential area, could be the height limit could be lifted to 50 feet. That's indicated, the area that's excluding is indicated in yellow on the map. So in other words, that's the 1,000 feet. That's how it shows over here. The second part of that was that the buildings and properties along Motor Parkway could be raised to 62 feet, and that's the blue areas that you see down through here. So the blue areas plus the remaining areas in through here would either be 50 feet or 62 feet. The 1,000 foot barrier remains the same as it is now? Yes. No change? That's correct. Okay. Now, the uh, other item which uh, talked about density, which is uh, we are now uh, permitting parking garages up to two stories in these particular areas, and they will not be counted in any way as part of the building area, even if they were included in the building themselves. So we feel that that's an advantage. And by the way, we've already had a couple of uh, uh, builders that came in and are actually talking about not so much building garages, but dropping, using their basement areas and dropping their parking lots and to utilize, to drive in so that it will not be as uh, 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 costly as to construct a garage, but and, it'll and still so be very go useful. Back, so if they were to um, build a garage underneath the building, it would not be calculated in what? As, as part of the size of the building or the oh, area. Okay. okay, so it wouldn't be penalized. And if it were on a roof? We actually didn't address that, but I imagine that uh, I probably, if they put it on the roof, I would probably say the same thing. It wouldn't be counting. Okay. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I never thought okay. of that. Okay. Uh, but it's, it's a fair question. <coughs> um, okay, then the uh, other thing, which was very important, both to the, uh, and generated a number of discussions, and actually uh, uh, Russ may want to comment on this, is about outside storage. What we did was we do, uh, are permitting outside storage, and originally we had several different ways that we approached this, but this is the best way which we think works, and uh, we think the uh, uh, Hop Hog Industrial Association also likes this, is that they're allowed 10% of the building size for outside storage. It has to be screened from public view, uh, and that screening could be either be in the form of fence or vegetation, uh, um, and it could also include containerized or, un uh, or uh, you know, things like pallets or other things that are stored there on the site. Well, the reason why uh, Russ and I were still discussing this as late as yesterday was we are concerned with uh, some issues with regard to protection of uh, dust-related or odor-related type storage. We think the or I think the ordinance is sufficient Russ had some questions on that. I don't know if you had a chance to resolve that, Russ, when the ordinance I gave you. Yes. Okay. Um, the concern that was expressed to us from uh, Hot Pot Industrial Association members was that if outdoor storage were permitted, that existing users of the industrial park might be adversely impacted by dust or odors. They were particularly concerned about how uh, a list of materials that they had. The uh, best way to summarize it is they wanted to make sure that you weren't going to allow, under the guise of outdoor storage, uh, composting operations, things of that nature. Uh, the way that the ordinance is presently written, uh, outdoor storage would be allowed, 
but if you reference back to other portions of the code, there are provisions in the code, uh, if you permit, uh, the storage of manure or odor or dust producing substances shall be in waterproof containers and shall not be permitted within 50 feet of any side or rear lot line or within 100 feet of any front lot line. What's the likelihood of that? Well, the point here that I am making is that the ordinance as drafted, I believe, is sufficient to protect the existing owners from adverse impacts from odors or dust because of this requirement that anything that could produce odors okay, or dust right. would Got need it. be in a water. And that's in our existing ordinance. That's in our so existing that ordinance. That would cover that. Yes. Okay. It, the last item that we have, can you finish first? Yes. Okay. The last item that we have, which we think is actually uh, very good for the industrial park, is that uh, for a building, if they want to include uh, features such as atriums or large uh, lobbies, if it's over 1.5% of the building size, we don't count that for parking. <coughs> so in other words, uh, some of the newer buildings that build these multi-story um, uh, atriums that go up two or three stories and are very attractive, our current ordinance counts not only the current floor, but the uh, theoretical floor above those as well. For the parking floor. For the parking. So now that it's not counted at all beyond 1.5% of the building size. So that what this will en uh, encourage is uh, even m more features to add on to buildings. And what that means from uh, your point of view is, is those type of buildings are the higher rent. Uh, I believe they refer to them as Class A buildings. And that's the kind of buildings that we're trying to encourage in the industrial park. So that's what about parking calculations if you reduce those? No, we haven't reduced those. We are working on, on that. And this is what you, you brought up. Uh, there were several outstanding issues that the board wanted us to consider. But either they were going to trigger issues that were going to be of, of density, which are going to increase it in, in going forth. So we decided to uh, slim down what we have right now that we could go with without a, uh, a problem. And we believe everybody's on board with this. But you're correct, we are taking a look at that particular issue. And what I wanted to mention to the board was that we don't consider this the, the first, uh, the end all to this particular proposal. We intend to revisit it. The board has expressed in the past issues of they want to go even higher if we possibly can. And uh, as far as parking goes, we are taking a look at parking. And right now, my staff is taking a look into parking ratios for large office buildings as opposed to small office buildings. In other words, the large, like when you have a building like the scale of TriTech, um, the people per square foot is much less than if you have a small, uh, you know, office that's, uh, well, let's say, a thousand or two thousand so, square but feet. But you're really saying, I think, you're going to reduce the calculation to make it more parking for the building that's expanding. That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And essentially, that's the ordinance as it stands right now. As what we are intending to have, I think we agreed on one hearing or two hearing, Fred. I, I don't. When we said, oh, oh, we're going to try to do it together. Same. Okay. Same uh, but time. is it going to be two? It'll, be, it'll have to be two separate hearings because okay. they're two different types of hearings. But okay. They obviously. Okay. So. Closely connected. When we uh, we were talking about this back and forth, and uh, what the board is going to hear is we're going to have two different lines, one for the, the ordinance amendment to create or the enabling legislation for the overlay district, and the second part will be the uh, ap application of the first overlay district, which will be the Hopwalk Industrial Park, or which will be the second uh, public hearing, which will have the same night. Is okay. there any provisions in there, Frank, or somewhere in the ordinance referencing the fire district? Uh, that's important to them. Um, well, about when the we go to expand, just that they're they're somehow not left out of the equation. That they're consulted because they they may in fact have some requirements if we start to expand in height, amount of people, etc. As far as the developer coming in, they may. Well, what if I'll they do don't talk to the fire district and then build it. They have <coughs> concerns then that you're tripling, quadrupling the amount of people. They may need more ambulance service, things of that nature. So just that they're somehow included in well, the We have they, two months. They should be included. They have been spoken to, and they are basically in agreement. So. Okay. Well, what I'll do in the interim, because we have a couple of months, uh, I will contact them. I'll have my staff contact okay. them. We'll get a response from them prior to the public hearing, so there won't be any surprises. Yeah, so no, I think that would be okay. worthwhile, so that they're not surprised either. Okay, so we'll take care of that, and we'll notify them. Um, what I also would like to do is we haven't submitted a copy of this to the HIA. They know the content of it, 
but I'd like to submit a copy to them so that they're aware of this and they can make any final comments on this as well. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it was a little bit longer the process that I wanted, but I think it's a good ordinance. Okay, thank you, Frank. Okay. Oh, no, we're not going to do secret this time. <laughs> Okay. You ask me later for the copy of that uh, memorandum of agreement so you can read it and study it for next time. Okay, not in the order of importance. Uh, John uh, Zolo, you gave me a resolution for the establishment of a workplace violence committee. Yes. Okay, and you want that read on today? If you could, because under some time constraints. Okay, you want to explain it? Um, briefly, we had been issued some citations and, and, and um, violations <coughs> by the Labor Department. And one of the things when they came to our site with the Parks Department, they noticed that while we have a uh, provision our code deals with workplace violence, we don't really have a, a program implemented consistent with the code provision. They said you really have to have this <coughs> committee and a plan in place. So in order to comply with that notice of violation, we have to put this in place. And the committee com is composed of, according to you, what you'd like to see is the uh, lo local union president, director of public safety, the uh, a member of the town attorney staff, town environmental protection director, director of parks and buildings, and the town personnel office. That would comprise, comprise the committee. Right. And there was a meeting yesterday about this, and that's what brought the resolution about. So the people who are at the meeting yesterday will pretty much with the board's consent of an approval comprise that committee. So okay. this will be a read on. Yes, please. <coughs> I have a contractual matter we need to discuss. I don't know. I would think that this is a uh, executive session. It's a question of payment to a vendor. Correct. Okay. Contract for that, yes. Okay. Um, do we discuss the default on the People's United Bank? A default? That's a litigation matter. Also a litigation. We just did the overlay districts. Per Councilman McCarthy, did you wish to discuss this at his station? They sent, um, that was the one where, on one of their conditions, the condition for the um, generator as per New York State law wasn't in it. And the applicant says they're going to bring in a letter stating that they'll comply to New York State law for generators. Okay. So who's we'll who the applicant and what's it? It's the Hess Station at um, Haunted Road. Haunted Road. And the New, New York State law is they got to require a generator on site or a transfer switch for the generator. So it's a good question, actually, since everybody's here. Yeah. You mean well, wouldn't it, it be a good idea for us to know this in advance? No, it's, it's, on, it's on your oh, Minitrack. It's, it's, not, it's not on today. It's on Minitrack. All right. And you, everybody got a copy of it. Okay. But um, we should... What do we want to do as a board? Do we want to list on new filling stations? Do we want to just have transfer switches where they can plug in a generator if they can get one? Or do like we did at 347 and 111, state we want one on site permanently? And that's a decision we have to make by board. Under New York State law, they just have to have a transfer switch. If I could just um, perhaps because they could, some of these stations may opt to rent the generator too. I, I think what the resolution that you had is, is a site plan approval and what Council McCarthy brought up was something was done on, on the prior approval was a condition imposed on the site plan. On 347 and 111. the right. generator. Right. And I think that's really all it's about, right? That's it. no, so that's, we have to make a decision as a board because New York State law allows the town to an, adopt further code above them, which makes it yes. you have a full-time generator all the time. I mean, a transfer switch is great, but you know, as you know, last time we had this big storm last, last October, nobody could get generators. And they do say they do have them readily available. But what do we want to do as a board? I mean, it's great for a big storm, but say you're having power outage for 10, 20 hours. It's not a big storm. So 
we should see where we want to go with this. So I, what's the question? So that should, I'm sorry, that should be amend that resolution or well, the, put a Peter condition. Well, Peter Hans is doing the condition, amending the conditions. Okay. To require them to put a generator on site, which is what was done. The three or, tra or transfer switch, or switch on site. Switch. Now it's up to us to say, do we want a generator on site or do we want a tr just a transfer s switch? The other applicant did it voluntarily. Right. This, under New York State law, that's all they have to do is a transfer, s transfer switch. switch only. Not, so we have to make a decision whether we want to enhance our law further or just add the transfer well, switch to one of the conditions of the site plan approval. It's up to the board here. I mean, how they feel they should have, have permanent or just a transfer switch and they go get one and plug it into it. But uh, um, don't hold me to this, but aren't there different regulations if they're near a highway? Yes. Then the transfer switch would be okay, but if they're distance from a highway, They'd need a generator. I got the whole list of regulations. I just got them yesterday. So, so I'm going to give them to the, the town attorney the and, the, and the planning department. Planning department. Yeah, and then we can look at yeah, it. Discuss right. it. Okay. All right. Um, so what are you going to do with this? We're just going to, it's not on because we got to get them look at the New, the New York State regulations. Okay, Frank, I think you know about this on this um, new zoning petition received from KPE2 yes. regarding housing. They raised a question here on your. The site has been the subject of Excuse recent litigation. Of yes. I have to recuse myself on that. Oh, okay. On directions of the ethics board. So you know what? Do you want me to uh, put this on advance and say, Bob, and you, we could stay here for the rest of it? Yeah, all right. And this way we we'll, we'll make that last. Okay. <clears throat> okay. AEDs. <laughs> I okay. knew that was coming. <laughs> What's the definition of AED? External automatic, automatic, automatic external defibrillator. defibrillator. Automatic external defibrillator. That's what it is. AED. Okay. So now we went, as you recall, okay. um, we had went back and we said we already had a policy in place for defibrillators. We modified the policy so um, youth organizations or any organization can, can donate AEDs, but when they donate it to the town, we require, if they're going to use the AED at the fields they're at, have four people certified on those AEDs. And we proposed, there was a memo I think we sent out to the board July 15, saying these are some of the conditions that we think you should do and impose on, as part of the policy. And one of them is that anyone who applies for a permit to use a, a field is required to have four people certified on AEDs. In furtherance of that policy, the donated defibrillator has to have a, a location. If you put it in a one of the um, park department houses, if no one's there, they don't have access. Up. They don't have access. So what was suggested was stations, um, similar to what you have in, you know, um, for um, for fire department when they have um, fire extinguishers, you break in and take it out if you need it. And it would be suggested that you put these standalone stations in the the parks as the defibrillators get donated. The concern about that is vandalism, um, normal wear and tear from the weather on them, but. I don't think there's any other alternative if you want to have them available for people in the fields for an emergency situation. You don't want to run to the house and have them kick down the door to get in there. Or park rangers carry them in their vehicles, but you know, it's, time is it's precious. So if you have to call a park ranger or, or a police officer to get to the park, it's too long. it might take too long. Um, Excuse I told me, wasn't there was some discussion that coaches <coughs> or other organizational people would have them in their vehicles. But they're not ours. They can take their own to the ball fields right. and they can have them, but they're not ours. What, what started this was uh, Mr. McQuaid had suggested a donation. And then that engendered a reviewing of the policy and coming up with these changes and some hold harmless language. But yes, they can bring their own to you right. know, each person can. But I think there's a trend across the country to put these on fields, so in a case of emergency, they're right there. Um, but the question, and, and uh, Chuck Barrett had raised it, was the possibility of vandalism and, um, and just, theft. And theft. So um, that's what the board has to make a decision on. How do you want to handle that? I think the concern 
is greater for vandalism than, than theft, but I really think that we should have them on site. They should be in the parks. I mean, we have them in the town hall. We should have them where kids are. And again, Parks Department is on board. John Valentine with the Fire Marshal's Office is, is in favor of this, but it's really the policy the board has to say, do you want to put this in the parks? And you start with the one park with the Kings Park youth is make a donation. You work in that park and see how that um, yeah, well, that's the only one. That's the only yeah. donation we have uh, that's being requested right now, right, from Mr. Right. McQuaid. Yes. So, uh, I'm sure so there are uh, or some type of facility or some type of cabinet that can be put out exterior. They're going <coughs> to donate them to the town. We're going to require them to have at least four people when they have a permit for that field <coughs> certified. I think we should do it. And, and the station is unlocked. Well. It could be locked just like a fire station. Yeah, it's locked. Break glass it, to enter it, or something can, like that. Oh, okay. I mean, but it's outside see, the building. It's outside the building. Right. It's, I, see. I see it as, as a freestanding structure in the I'm park. I'm sure they make something. Yeah. And um, yeah. I think you're, you'd be on the, you know, on the lead in terms of communities in doing this type of thing. I, I, I think we should do it, absolutely. So, with the board's permission, I'll work with Parks and the Fire Marshal's Office and Public Safety um, to get this moving. I would I'm sure the Fire that. Marshals could be helpful in... in Telling you what can be purchased. Oh, they've been, they have been. I mean, we've yeah. really worked with them on it. Rich McKay has, has been wonderful. And during the off season, then you, they take them back yeah, to the fire marshal's office and remove yeah. them, so they but can I think, make, do the maintenance on them. I think the critical component of this that anyone who's going to be at those parks who wants to make a donation has to have four people certified. Yeah, I agree. I think the leagues themselves should take on that responsibility, regardless of whether or not there's one on the site. Anyhow, but that's Correct. that's for them to decide. Okay. John, do you have any idea what the cost of a defibrillator is? Hmm. Only, as, only a guesstimate. I think it's about three thousand dollars. Yeah, they're expensive. Well, that that brings the theft problem in play. Mm -hmm. I, I think under the con state contract, they're between twelve and fifteen hundred. Mm -hmm. But I, I, you know, I, like I said, I just. On, but still, there is a theft problem on it. You know, break the glass, it's gone. You know, that's the problem. It's the, if you need it and it's not there, what happens? Would it be a way, basically, if we know when we're going to have games, we have the cabinet and we put it in that cabinet during that game. And then the park ranger removes it after the games to safe keep it during the week when there's no one there. That may be a way to go. That's a good idea. It's a possibility, you know, that basically, so we don't lose these things because they're going to disappear. There's and no doubt about it. For the safety of the children, mm -hmm. we should have them there. So, so devise something, I'm sure. Okay, Fairview Avenue, is that executive session? Yes, that's purchase of real property, yes. A lot of stuff in the town attorney's office here. Do we discuss this request on this uh, coastal consistency, Schatberg? Uh Supervisor, I have been discussing it with Council McCarthy and Lloyd and Creighton. Uh, we had John Bongino, the building director over yesterday, he has asked if the board would table that this afternoon. Um, he wants to talk to the architect further. Uh, they discovered some things on the plan that they may be able to work out that uh, might make it work as far as the LWRP goes. What number is that, do you know? It's number five on the agenda. Okay, it's a 5A. So we're going to table 5A? That's what he's requested, yes. <laughs> this would be executive session discussion on the um one well, launch well litigation. Okay. And did I ask you about this, Frank, on the uh, on the housing for KPE site, the application to build houses? We're going to adjourn that one. Uh, that's, that, oh, that's the one that bought. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then, why don't we, uh, we? We this is not litigation. We can discuss it here. That's correct. Okay, so Bob, do you want to leave on that? That's KP tell you up to. Okay. Step out. And then the, after that, when he gets back, we're going to litigation. Right, the only thing 
Um, just before Bob leaves, if you wanted to just, um, I just wanted to make sure the board takes a look at that letter that was written from the fire commissioners on the site. If you can consider it, maybe we can discuss it at some point for the next work session. That was for a letter from Commissioner Duckham with respect to the um, oh the uh, communications communications tower, tower and the zoning the exemption under the, for um, public purposes. You can all take a look at that memo, and um, at maybe the next work session we can have a decision as to how you want to handle it, or the board could also just instruct me to advise the board on it, and then I can present the memo to the well, board. Well, it really is a legal question. It's a legal question. But it requires, you know, consideration and um, by the town board. And what I don't want to do is um, give the board a memo saying I recommend doing this. What no, do no, you but, think? but I think the memo from you should say yes, you can do it. Yes. I mean, I well, don't know yeah, what permitted yes to no. do. Yes or no. Yeah. Yeah. So, exactly. Th so my point is, what I'd like to do in the board's mission is I'll do a memo to the board reviewing everything right. and make a right. recommendation in the board okay. at the next meeting, which right. will you can then either. Accept or, or refuse, whatever you want to do, but at least it's resolved. Okay. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay. A zoning petition has been received regarding the uh, <clears throat> construction of housing on the KPE2 site. Yes. Mm -hmm. You sent a memo to the board to review before we set it for. Uh, advertisement for public hearing yes correct this was the board's request we would send it first in advance yes. and then right. you would discuss what to do I would mention however well that let me finish and okay. then you can discuss it sure one there was a um, paragraph here in your memo the site has been the subject of recent litigation the petition describes the current use as vacant former precast concrete products industrial yard and concrete cesspool storage. What did you mean by that's? It's that's not that anymore. No, that's what's described in the application. Right. I, I, that's we we did not comment on. You know, that's not an editorial comment. That's just what's in the application. That's what they described. That's the description they put in there. Yes, we would describe it differently, but we let it go with that. Their Supervisor, if I just might, this is on the KPE two that's site. Correct. I wasn't aware that the application, I had heard the application was filed, I haven't seen anything, but whatever the board does in this, we have to be mindful, and that will be executive dis session discussion, how this ties into the litigation. We did call Martin on this, just to let you know. Yeah, no, it's fine. Okay. I just don't. Well, the residents still feel they're breaking the court orders, are they? No. No, John just sent the memo. I, s I sent the memo to the board. Oh, yes. I met with um, Michelle Gary and Larry Shaw yesterday, and I explained to them um, briefly, the activities engaged in are consistent with the order of Justice Pitts, and based upon information that's provided to me by public safety, they're not violating the order. And I have a memo that went out yesterday afternoon. Okay. Frank, did you send Do we all get that memo? I don't. Yeah, I, don't yeah. I sent it to I everyone. Yeah. No, I didn't get it either. Really? Everybody. Yeah. Everybody got it. Take a look at the bottom. Mm -hmm. I know, well, there's been computer problems downstairs. So. I, yeah, we have. I haven't seen Look it. at the back. Yeah, now see if you people copy. No, Frank, the next page. Which the next page? <laughs> no, th this was sent oh, out. Okay. Elaine sent it out. It went okay. by email. Yeah. Okay. Could, Elaine, could you do us a favor? We, we've had two days of computer nightmares downstairs. <laughs> so can you uh, just send sure. us a hard copy over? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Um, but the paragraph that I um, referenced, mm -hmm. I've been called. What does that mean? <clears throat> Basically, all this means is this is what the applicant put in his application. I see. Okay. We did, we did not <clears throat> uh, uh, acknowledge that that was an accurate statement. Okay. We just said this is, just for your own benefit, this is what the applicant said his site is being used for right now. So in other words, uh, if you were to ask me to describe that particular site and what is permissible or what is happening there on the site it would be different from what is included here okay so what does it mean to a town board that's going to deal with that that their description is not accurate well i think what is, is it illegal well, it's, actually i think that's their description as they see it you can't really no. say that you know we could say it's a, it's, we have different an opinion 
but they describe their property. It's like we've always had with CEQA. You know, one person says it's one thing, another person says it's another. That's their, their, if that's their description of their site. Mm -hmm. Now, you can give us a description, what you feel it is, but it's two different, different people's But opinion. their description mm -hmm. is not accurate, and so people concerned about it. I don't know what it means very you're much. Cor you're correct very much right. on this, Supervisor. I'm not disagreeing with you on this. However, this is the applicant's position. When we hold the public hearing, you will get a memo from me which will describe. Okay, but let's, let's be practical here. Mm -hmm. I would think that every one of us here, I, I would speak for, would like to see houses there or yes. some form of residence mm -hmm. zoning. Does that description there alter the application? No. It doesn't? No. It has no effect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess give it to me back. Okay. That, if I that application we're talking about is for one site, correct? That's correct. And AP2 only. That's correct. Not Jezuali. That's correct. Okay. I, and that's an important point, though. It sure is, because <laughs> we're plunking a residential community next if jump. we approve that yeah. right. back down right next to industry, okay. again, which we, we shouldn't have done the first The place. attorney uh, for both parties is the same. And what I asked the attorney, and we had meetings on this, which is what Councilman Wareheim is, is, is alluding to, which is a very important factor, is that the board is not going to be of a mind to build a residential complex right next to an actively operating sand mine operation or a sand processing or whatever or mulching or whatever you want to call it. So both parties have to uh, come in with something for a rezoning. Let, let me just play. I'm not a lawyer. Mm -hmm. but I'll act like a lawyer. Don't you play one They have an absolute right to uh, to uh, make that application. Yes. Town board has an obligation to hear it, and then based you don't, on what you're you saying, don't even have an obligation. You don't have an obligation. You don't have an obligation. But mm -hmm. in the final analysis, the town board will say no. We are going to deny this application based on its uh, proximity to all these obnoxious. Well, the reason I'm mentioning this is these are important factors, and the board may want to say, for in this particular case, hypothetically that if another application is coming in, maybe you would want to schedule them the same evening or maybe you would want to consider them at the same time because they're all going to contain the same issues that are going to be relevant to the board. And that would, if, if that's what they're doing, maybe uh, that's what we should do. That would be my recommendation at this point, barring the town attorneys. Uh, what is your recommendation? I would recommend that we postpone this until they, they the attorney mentioned to me that Jeswali intends to have an application shortly coming in. And my recommendation to the board would be to consider both applications the same night. Okay. If, that's the if that's the case, then I will uh, advise them. If the attorney feels that that information has changed, then let him respond to the board, and then the board can consider this separately. Are you obligated to accept an application? I'm obligated to accept it. I can't do anything about it. Oh, okay. first off, I don't accept the application. It's the town clerk that accepts the well, application. But you know what I mean. Yes. The town accepts the application. Yes. Is, there a, um, is it incumbent to hear it? No. No. Okay. It's a legislative act, so okay. the board, it's up Fair to enough. the board. Okay. That mm -hmm. answers that question. Okay. I'm out of a paper. <laughs> you just killed seven <laughs> trees over there. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. And that's on the um, Gibbs Pond and Lake. Okay, wait, wait. Yeah, everybody knows. So John can put it with John sent it around. You want to go over it, John? Gibbs Pond and Lake? Yeah. Just someone to take care of the condemnation. Yeah. John's going out for the appraisal for Gibbs Pond and Lake. Just it's past the 30 days. Well, well past the 30 days we gave him. So he's going out for the appraisal. At that right. point, then we can make a decision. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take care of ordering the appraisal. It's going to do, be a condemnation appraisal, which is a little more pricey, but it's the right thing to do in case we have to actually go the full condemnation route. I'd rather do that. So I'll take care of that. Um, I think there was application. The site plans were submitted to Peter Hans for review. That, yes. Um, so they are making progress, but I think <clears throat> we'll move forward with the, with the condemnation appraisal. I'll take care of ordering that this week. Okay. There's nothing else we'll do executive sessions? Oh, before I'd like to okay. speak uh, <clears throat> concerning Whisper Landing, Mike, would you step up, please? We were awaiting the secret from Whisper Landing, which we requested some time ago. And I called yesterday, and it has been held up to some degree. Frank, you had contacted uh, Russ. Yes. 
And I, I'm not sure if this is litigation because we have a lawsuit. I'm not sure. Whisper Landing, I don't know what we're talking about. I don't think it is at this point. If it is, you, can't it is, you could just no, not. We, have, no, we, know, we received an Article 78 about, about it. Not, I, I'll just defer to the town attorney. Well, right. we'll have to, why don't we have the question, then we'll see what, <laughs> where yeah, it this, leads. Yeah, this question relates not to the legal aspect of it. You discussed the matter with Russ Barnett on October 1st, and you sent a report to him on October 1st, and you said, I intend to ask the town board if it feels a new public hearing is warranted. That could be a legal issue. My question is, that was on October 1st. Mm -hmm. We haven't heard anything from you at this point. That's correct. I, All right. I, Can you I, tell I'm us why? What I'm doing right now is I'm compiling the information for, to show uh, the, what is raised here was that there are different designs for the <coughs> building that were submitted before the <coughs> you, Who's raising that, Bob? I am. I raised that. Is raised that what you're issue. reading from it's that memo? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. May I see yeah, it? Sure. Okay. Here's the second page. There was a uh, different building design that was submitted to the Board of Appeals that was different from the design that came before the town board. The issue that I'm going to give to the town attorney to resolve, and I wanted to compile both so I could give it to him, was would this require a new public hearing? It's only a question at this particular point. It does not a, uh, a, a opinion on my part or whatever but given the fact of the uh, uh, dis uh, heated discussions that we've had on this I think we ha and the fact that already litigation is engendering I think we have to follow procedure and we should take a look closely mm -hmm. at what is happening here so what I am doing is I've asked my staff to, to uh, combine the uh, two different sets of plans send them to the town attorney with an annotation on what has changed and what is different and then let the town attorney advise as to what what his opinion is on this so the question I think out of all this I don't know anything about that memo is a, a, a hearing was held and a description of what was going to be done or built was had at the hearing yes the hearings over yes now a new description is being proffered is that correct? That's correct. And your question is, does that require a new hearing? I guess because people heard the old hearing. That's correct. Okay. And, and my question is, why did it take 10 days before we find out about it? And we didn't find it out from you. We find out from Mr. Barnett. I think that you should have at least advised the board that we're going in that direction. My apologies, but I didn't have an answer to the question at that particular point. Uh, and I was going to tell the board that, but I... Certainly, I, it was an error on my part. I should have advised you. I that memo you have is not for the board, though. And no. No. So we're not even aware yeah. of it. I, don't think no. I, I call Martin on these things. No, no. Okay, so, but anyway, okay, have you got your question answered? Well, one one other question. I read in the paper today, there's an article written by Ms. Harrison, I believe, um, about the BZA and about uh, Whisper Landing. And both the town attorney and the BZA attorney refused to comment because this was a litigation matter. Mr. DeRubius felt compelled to comment on it. I think that's inappropriate. I Wait, think no. if the town attorney shouldn't comment on it, then I don't think any of us should be commenting. Okay, but my question is uh, now, what did she write? She wrote about this? Yes. yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, and, and I guess what she wrote was as a question whether hearing. Well, it is that. now it is now a matter, right. a legal matter, and the town attorney and the BZA attorney both say it's inappropriate to comment. Uh, Frank doesn't think it's inappropriate. I do. I, I, when I read the comment this this morning, I would agree with you, Councilman. I would agree that it was inappropriate for me to say that at the time when I was responding to the question, I was giving a generic description of what the issue was, and it was taken as a specific description as to what it is. And who raised the question? Well, the question was raised is what was the nature of the Article 78 suit? Oh, and okay. what I said was, and I was, and, and I believe Councilman Creighton is correct in this, uh, that it was, it, uh, I, it wasn't misinterpreted. I did say what I did say, but I was speaking generically as to uh, when an article, uh, when a, um, uh, a decision is rendered by the board in the 62 days 
and when that is counted. And what I said was that, uh, in describing this, was that uh, we've always held that these, these 62 days begins after we adopted a CEQA declaration. And what I said in the article was that I feel confident about this because that I was speaking generically <coughs> about all uh, uh, matters. However, it was interpreted and could be interpreted by reading that particular article that I was speaking specifically about the lawsuit. I think just as, you know, taking this case example of all the cases, any time the cases involve litigation, there really shouldn't be any comment on it. Whether it's generic or otherwise, it can be um, taken out of context to be considered something else. And I go back to a long time ago, we had the Grassy Pond Road accident with the deaths, and I saw John Moore on television talking about the accident, and I was sitting at my table and go, why is he talking about this? As a general rule, when management involved litigation, there should be no comment on it. Um, it's just a safer, uh, better way to go, so you can avoid any misunderstandings. And, so it, and that's from anybody. Can, from anybody. From anybody. I think that's yeah. just the, I'm the, not just the safer, on Frank, safer you know, course. It's commonsensical. Supervisor, um, I would agree with you, but as I've seen, and it's happening. Okay, in the but past. that has nothing to do with the question about the question is, a new hearing or not. No, no, I haven't. Okay. I haven't seen the memo, and Martin, everything comes to me, so I haven't seen the memo. So maybe we didn't get it yet, but I'll look at it. I'll advise okay. the, the board on that as requested. But as a matter of, of going forward, not to anyone in particular, we should not discuss any cases that are involved litigation with the press. It's a simple thing to say. Um, the Maslin litigation have no comment, and it, it avoids any misunderstandings. Okay. Thank you. I move to go into executive session. Second. Second. Aye. 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 Ready? Okay. I move to end the uh, executive session. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I move to terminate the work session of uh, October 8th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, so.